So here is the brand new G20 3 Series and today we've actually got the 330i M Sport model and this starts from around £40,000 in the UK and I actually really like it, especially over the previous gen. I think it just looks altogether a bit more grown up and a bit more rounded off, even maybe with that slightly bigger grille, which, as we know, is a quite a controversial design feature of new BMWs, but I don't think it looks too bad. And overall, with that M Sport package, it does really look quite aggressive. But anyway, we'll do a quick walk around of the car now and we'll show you each of the different sides. So the front end actually is uh, one of my favourite parts of the car actually, I think the, the lights look really nice, it's got a nice aggressive look to it and obviously with this being the M Sport model um, it does have those extra tweaks on it as well. So we've also got these really nice 19 inch M Sport wheels as well and as you can see it's quite a common theme with these M Sports, just M badges all over. Maybe a bit too much for my liking considering it's not an actual M car but to be honest it looks okay, it, it's not too overkill and it gives a nice reminder, I suppose, of uh, the fact that it is an actual M Sport model. So we've also got some really nice calipers on the front as well, nice beefy, uh, big discs as well. And to be honest, the ones on the rear are pretty big as well, but we will get more into the brakes when we take it out for a drive a bit later on. The rear of the car actually looks much better than the previous generation as well, in my opinion. I think it just looks more rounded off and, again, a bit more grown up, actually. I also like the tailpipes kind of split at each end and just this nice little lip spoiler as well. It just makes it look nice and aggressive and uh, just finishes off the car nicely, actually. So one of the great features of the 3 Series saloon is just how big this boot is. I mean, it is just huge. We've got a lot of camera equipment in there and there's plenty of space. You could probably put twice the amount of gear in there with no issues at all. And I guess that just is one of the main things about this. It's incredibly usable as an all-round daily car. Um, it's just, yeah, so much space. Very, very practical indeed. So the interior of this new G23 Series is really where, for me, this money is incredibly well spent. Now, as I mentioned at the start, uh, it's a £40,000 car and that's quite a bit of money for a 3 Series, but the material usage in this interior is just amazing. The leather's really nice, we've got this really nice kind of like metal effect. I guess it's obviously not going to be metal in the 3 Series, but it just looks great. We've also got these nice metal buttons sort of dotted around as well, and it just, it just looks really, really well done. The screen, we've got the uh, latest uh, infotainment system as well, so this is a touchscreen unit as well as the control down here. And it just looks really good. It's nicely integrated, actually. We've also got the fantastic Harman Kardon sound system, which, as I've mentioned in previous videos, just sounds absolutely brilliant. Really nice high-end uh, sound from that. And these seats as well, I must say, very, very comfortable and pretty supportive as well. These aren't the most aggressive seats um, in the world, but they, you know, they, they offer a nice amount of support, so you can sort of drive this thing relatively hard and not be moving around all over the place. But on longer journeys and stuff, definitely feels like these are going to be much more comfortable than some other seats out there. Okay, so here we are then, out on the road in the G20 330i. Now, I've spent a bit of time in this car at this point and it's really quite impressed me and it's just a very sort of capable thing. And I'm actually asking myself the question, well, is this the perfect daily? Like, do you actually need anything more than this? So we've got the two litre B48 turbocharged four cylinder engine that we're pretty familiar with. Um, it's used, I mean, all across the range now in both BMWs and minis and it's a fantastic engine. In this state of tune, it's making about 255 horsepower and 295 foot-pounds of torque, which is more than enough. And in this case, it's all the rear wheels as well. That is mated to the 8-speed ZF gearbox, which at this point is an absolute legend in the transmission game. And it's just a brilliant gearbox. It is just so good. A lot of the time you can just leave it in fully auto mode and it really does predict those gears fantastically well. The shifts are sharp, not quite as quick as a dual clutch, but as quick as you're going to want day to day. So that sort of performance gives us a, a 0 to 60 time of about 5.6 seconds and a top speed of 155 miles an hour which is limited. As we know with this engine turbo lag is pretty much negligible especially when paired with this 8-speed auto which can just drop gears in an instant and eliminate any of that turbo lag that would otherwise be there. And to be honest that engine really does sound pretty good I'll give you a bit of a burst of acceleration now. 
just flick it up with the paddles. Oh, the torque, it's really good. The steering's nice and fast actually. I mean, there's not all that much feel through it, but you know, I'm, I'm not gonna go too much into that. We know what electric racks are like. They're not as good as the old hydraulic ones, but this one works pretty well. It's definitely nice and precise. We've also got the usual array of uh, driving modes. We've got so many actually. I think we've got Eco Pro, Comfort, uh, then we've got Sports, but there's also a complete individual mode as well, which you can configure to how you like. I find that in, even in sport mode actually, on these 19 inch rims, it rides pretty well. Like, it really doesn't feel as harsh as you might expect. But then if you step it back into comfort mode, obviously it's even softer and it's just brilliant motorway cruiser. This thing is so quiet on the road. I had this thing at 70 on the motorway earlier today and oh, it's just, it's just sublime. I mean, there's just nothing like it. And I suppose that's, that's what makes me think, is this the perfect daily driver? I mean, if you're interested in driving, but you don't want something that's, you know, right at the top end of performance, you don't want an M car, you maybe want something that's a little bit lower down and something that's probably a lot more affordable. This could be a really, really good choice. That performance goes a long way actually, and it, it does feel like it's pretty fast. Uh, we're looking at only about 1500 kilos in weight for this car, so it's not particularly heavy. And as I mentioned earlier, this interior is just a wonderful place to be. The use of materials is lovely, and it is very, very comfortable and very quiet. You could easily do long distances in this with no issues at all. We've also got a really nice heads-up display actually which displays the information really well and these nice digital dials I mean I'm not the biggest fan of the way these are set up I prefer the um, sort of more analog style and those sort of LED backlit ones we're seeing on some of the new BMs today they look quite a bit better certainly no lack of performance so the 330i sits roughly in the middle of the range actually for the new 3 Series. We've got the 340i above it, and then you've got the likes of the 320i's, 320d's below it. And then obviously right at the top you've got the M3, uh, of which we haven't seen the new generation yet, but that's due to come out soon. So I suppose it gives a very good balance of daily drivability, uh, cheap running costs, and also performance. And I think for a driver, or a driver's perspective, I know that's something that I would be concerned about, it really does feel like you can have a lot of fun in this thing and it's very, very capable. I suppose it's just that age old question of do you actually need anything more than this for daily use? And yes, it's going to be nowhere near as quick as the 340i and the M3 as well, but yeah, it doesn't make me think. Maybe, maybe this is all you need. And of course at that price point as well, it is very good value. This just feels like a very premium executive saloon car and it does the job incredibly well. So yeah, I mean, overall, I've been incredibly impressed with this 330i, and I think if you're in the market for something that kind of offers a bit of everything, you know, daily drivability, practicality, but also something that you could actually drive and have fun in, this is definitely a good choice. And at the price point as well, I think it's extremely competitive in the market. Now, I just want to say a massive thanks to Cooper Teesside BMW for making this review possible. Please do go check those guys out. I've left all their links in the description below. So yeah, if you're looking for your next BMW, please do go check them out.